and uh, obviously a handful of House of Delegates races up for grabs locally too. County Commission, many things on the ballot to this uh, time around, including the excess levy for the schools. This has been mistakenly referred to in some forums online as the bond. This is not the bond. With us in studio, the president of the Board of Education, Pat Murphy. Good morning, sir. How are you? Great. And Vice President Jackie Long. Jackie? Greater. Greater. <laughs> A competition. That's what we need. Uh, first of all, as I've told the two of you this before, you're both soft-spoken. So I need you to le lean into your microphones when you talk so that we can all hear you very nicely. We even gave you shorter chairs. You we want me to say I'm greater again? <laughs> if you'd like. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Put, put Jackie in executive session yeah. and you will not hear the soft spoken. <laughs> <laughs> right. But on the radio, soft spoken, radio, TV. Uh, I want to first and foremost thank you both for coming in. I know you had a, a meeting last night. There were some things added to the agenda that were important to deal with. And obviously, in the crisis of the North Middle situation, we appreciate the president of the board and the vice president coming in to answer some questions. This is as much as we appreciated Melissa Power doing it uh, earlier as well. The difference between the bond and the levy people are voting on this time, okay? Jackie, tell me the difference between the bond and the levy. There is some confusion online. The bond is for buildings. The levy is for learning, for um, um, employee benefits. Uh, textbooks, we don't use textbooks much anymore, Di uh, digital, um, anything digital. Uh, we also provide to the Parks and Rec, uh, the ex uh, extension office, the libraries, the one more thing, Pat. Health department. Health department. Um, on and on and on. I have that. So here. if if people want to send a message about North Middle and they're not happy with Berkeley County Schools and they do that by voting against the excess levy on this ballot and the excess levy fails, what is the effect on Berkeley County Schools? Well, the impact is not immediate because this uh, excess levy runs out in 25. Mm -hmm. So it, it affects the... Uh, July 1 of 25 would be uh, the first day that uh, the money would not be available. It would cut salaries. Uh, Jackie has the numbers there, what it impacted. Teacher, uh, cut salaries for teachers? Yeah, 9500 and uh, service personnel, 7000 We cut teachers' salaries by $9,500 a year. So this, this levy is directly responsible for, for increasing teachers' salaries by 9500 a year? In, and school service yeah, personnel by 7000 In essence, because of the things they'll lose, like tuition reimbursement, uh, PEIA, health insurance supplement, uh, new teacher orientation, family dental plan and vi uh, vision plan, um, certification fees, on and on and on. So there's also a salary. So, a so if, salary if you're mad about yeah. North Middle and you want to take it out on somebody and you take it out by voting no, what you're taking it out on is the teachers around the county and the cafeteria workers and the custodial staff. Yes. That's the point I'm making. Because the excess levy for teachers provides 19% um, above the West Virginia salary and for service personnel, 23% above the West Virginia salary. And this is not a new thing, right? This is a, no, continuation, it's a continuation of that's been going on for how long? Many years. 75. 75. Since 1975. No, so no, 75 years. 75 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is this is not a the, the, this is not it's not a, new. A reward for something that's happening this year. So I just want the people to understand yeah. that this is a continuation of something that's been going on for a long time. Does this require a super majority or simple majority? Simple, simple. majority. Simple. So 50 percent plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So uh, the, the, and the root of my question is that there's obviously anger, as there should be, over the situation at North Middle School and, and who knows, at some other schools uh, that maybe feed into it that help uh, create this situation along the way. And... What appears to be, from what we've heard, a Board of Education that didn't get all the information that they were supposed to have, and a, uh, a situation that appeared to be, when you read the story, out of control at North Middle. So, Pat and Jackie, let's hear it. What do you, what do you have to say for this situation? Well, for one, I, I, as I said last night um, at the board meeting, uh, I'm not going to shoot the messenger one. The State Department. I've, I've heard some of that. I mean, there are some concerns, but quite frankly, uh, I'm not going to shoot the messenger. Um, I was upset that it, uh, 
the second thing I want to make a point is we do have an employee that will probably have a hearing, and I don't want to jeopardize my responsibility as a jurist to sit on the panel to hear that. So I have to be careful what I say about any particular individual, Senator, which I will not say. Not just him, all of us. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, uh, like on the county commission, on the school board, you, you sometimes set in a position of all three branches of government, making policy, ex executing the policy, and then sitting in a, uh, a hearing about individual uh, people. So I don't want to do that. But the uh, but what did one of the things that uh, I was upset about? First, I asked. I read the quote out of the journal the, by Hardesty to our superintendent. And said, "Is this a accurate reflection of what was what, what you were told?" And he said, "Yes," and that included me being a failure as far as uh, the statement made. Now we've tried to do things, and I'd be glad to talk about that later in the program here. But but that was upsetting. But we have a board office full of people sitting on one side of Martinsburg, and we had a school with major problems on the other side. And we had people drive up here 315 miles from Charleston to tell us we got a problem on the other side of town. And that, was a, and that bugged me because we need, to have, we need to have more of our central office people out in the schools, and we need to be being told what's going on. I upset a lot of administrators before this ever happened because there are moments when I feel like I'm not on the Board of Education, I'm on the Board of the Mushroom Factory. And I'm not going to go into detail why that is, but you, a lot of people know. And, and I've called out the administration on that, on that perception. They've tried to they've challenged me on that, and uh, I think Ms. Long will say I responded in an appropriate fashion uh, in a quieter arena than the public. Pat, who is the face of the administration when you say, I've, I've responded to the administration, and, and Jack, you'll back me up on this, and, and I feel like I'm the, the, the board of the mushroom factory instead of the board of education implies to me that you're not getting the information that you're asking for. Who's responsible for stonewalling you? Everybody, we, our employee, we only have one employee as a five-member board, and that's a superintendent. And you're saying he's stonewalling you, he's not getting you the information you're requesting? I'm saying that we've we've been presented powerpoints that didn't reflect the uh, entire issue. Melissa Power uh, made a similar point, Jackie. Do you yeah, concur? I, I was just I, I just think that's what upsets most of us. Every month we have monitoring items from for or regarding the schools or uh, academics, whatever. Um, you know, we want to know the good, bad, and the ugly. I don't, I don't want a, a rosy picture every time because that's not what's going on out there. Uh, I, I think that's definitely what we got on February 21st with the uh, report regarding North Middle, and that angered me thoroughly. Who, who gave the report? It, it came from the school itself, the principal, and um, the central office was helping her with that report, I would assume, wouldn't you, Pat? I'm, I'm not going to comment about the person. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, well, he asked me who gave the report. That's who gave it. I mean, it's on the... It's Public on the, record, is it not? It's on the YouTube um, presentation, so... Um, While we're on the February meeting, I want to clarify something, because I did make a mistake inadvertently. Uh, there was two schools. Winchester Avenue was the other school. I had received information about the, the grade, the uh, academic performance of the school. And my numbers were five points different from what the school presented. And so I challenged the principal at the time. What had happened is when I'd asked for the information, I'd received the initial test results of that school. But the results had not been what you call scrubbed the students who had been there less than 140 days did not count as part of that school's results. And I, I, uh, I, I uh, so I was using the early numbers and not the, uh, the scrub numbers. Like if a student came into your school 
uh, a week before the test. You can, it's unfair to count those scores, even if they're higher than the rest of the kids. You can't count them. You had to have a, that student body there 140 days for those scores. So when people go back and watch this tape, they're going to see where I challenged the principal. And I didn't find out till the next day what the discrepancy was in the scores. It was not a mis it was not a cover up or anything else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Winchester Avenue came out of looking uh, looking bad because of my question, but it was just a, a a miscommunication on the on the actual scores versus the ROE score numbers that I had received. Bill, yeah, uh, I appreciate you folks coming today. These are uh, it's it's tough times for you it's tough times for the community it's tough times for the the school system uh and certainly what we saw in the report from the uh, state board of education north middle school is is center in a lot of our minds Ex there's another fact as well and pat i applaud you for bringing in some numbers and i've looked at them just very quickly west virginia is recognized as being 50th uh as far as student achievement uh the uh, in the nation. Yet the numbers that you've shown me this morning are the middle schools, only the middle schools. If we do not look at the individual schools, if we look at the schools grouped, we are below West Virginia uh, in, uh, in, in mathematics, a substantial below West Virginia in mathematics, slightly below the West Virginia average in English. So what we're saying here, Berkeley County, which is both one of the more progressive, one of the more, I think, one of the more advanced counties in the in the state. We are ranking below what is the generally what is the lowest state in the nation. That to me is hard facts to digest, and I think this needs to be found out why. Well, it's, to me, it's not hard to find out why or to figure out why when you have that many uncertified teachers as. We have 250 perm subs. Uh, employees come in for a year and leave uh, if they stay that long. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's a hard thing to figure out why we're failing in this area. And we can't seem to get the rest of the state to wake up to that. Nobody wants to help. Will I, will I take blame for North Middle School? Sure, I'll take that blame. But I, I feel sad and upset because we are the ugly stepchild of the rest of the state and it's went on for years and it's just keep getting worse and you can see by those uh test scores why yeah i like the fire jackie well i'm angry i'm i'm more than angry bring it that's great pat I, I, I lost my thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, but and, and I and I agree with Jackie. Uh, there's passion that's needed here, and and I'm not sure where the blame lies. I was I'm not I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I'm just pointing out the facts that we in Berkeley County rank less or lower than the poorest state in the nation as far as test scores. Well, number two, while you're regaining your thoughts, you know, discipline is horrible. It's horrible here. It's horrible all over the state and the nation. And that correlates to these test scores. You can't have kids out in the hall when they need to be behind, be behind the desk and listening to their parents. that you, you know, you can't control these kids. They're just out of control. And parental support, I'm sorry, but it's, it is severely lacking. We have good parents out there, and then you have other parents that we've never seen them in a school period. So <clears throat> when you step back, you know, I spent a lot of time as a safety engineer, right? I've done a lot of accident investigations. So you go, things blow up, people are hurt, you go, wow, that really sucks. And you get a couple of minutes to feel sorry for yourself, and you say, okay, now we got to fix it. Yeah, we got to Make fix sure it. this doesn't happen. So now things blew up, and it really sucks. So it's now time to fix. So when you look at this in a, in a dispassionate way, is, there, is this fixable within Berkeley County? You don't have to get the state involved. You don't have to get the state board of education involved. You're obviously not going to be able to write checks and get and get more teacher pay. But is there somebody looking within Berkeley County to say, all right, we're on our own here, folks. 
we need to fix what we can and how are what is that effort your points excellent john because we're we're basically uh, investigating an uh, an accident or a mm-hmm. collision or something like that yeah you just you, we just discovered a bad thing yeah yeah and we we have we have division within the board and I can only say that because this discussion is going on in the executive session um, with contract negotiations. So that that's one issue. But we, as a community, sometimes we try to retain the familiar, but we're not familiar with the failure. We just want to keep keep that comfort zone and people and and excuse are, me there's a lot of euphemism there. okay the okay. the the top and i'm talking about the board office needs to be in more contact with the troops we need to have our people out of the board office into the schools not in a gotcha mode but in a how can we work together and help you mode Excuse me, Pat. I get awful confused when you use terms like board office. Are okay. you talking about the administration or the Board of Education or who? Well, the Board of Education. When you say the board office, who are you talking I'm about? I'm talking the about the people, the people paid to do the job and the board who office. Who are we talking about? Central talking office, Winchester Central Avenue, office. superintendent well, I, I, okay, staff. Okay, I, okay. We, we, have, we have more than just a department of instruction. And I, I said this last night. Which is called teaching and learning. Now. Teaching and learning. We have we have pupil su- uh, services department. We have an area for equity and inclusion investigating, and we need all of these areas out. I I attended the um, the uh, premiere of the Raymer School video, and the video is outstanding. But what also occurred was a panel discussion. And I heard people from our from our community, uh, our African American community, express concern over the N word being used in the school system. And we need, and I told our equity and inclusion, we need to go out and check. Regardless of race, we need to challenge that practice. That that's one issue that's coming up, and I think was in the in the report. We need to have, we have administrators that have turned their schools around. If you look at South Middle School. Mark Barney. Mark yeah. Barney. Mark Barney s- staff. Now, you look at the staff. The students are still apprehensive, but the staff expressed last, uh, in 21-22, 93% sat- feeling safe. They increased to 96% there that is a remarkable achievement for the pat can it be as simple as finding out what mark barney has implemented at south middle and trying to implement the same at north middle well i can tell you some of it please um and i mean no disrespect but it's the the way those schools are district years and years ago south middle used to be the north middle and pat can tell you that yeah, if, if when, uh, when the kids ran into each other in high school, they'd ask, well, where did you go to school? And if the kids from North Middle, I was talking to my son, who's a South Middle grad, and he said they kind of raised their nose like, oh, you went to South Middle. So what you're saying is that what Mark does at South might not necessarily work at North. No, 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 no. no. It no. would work? I know. I'm, I'm just saying that the the the, uh, the atmosphere, atmosphere that was generated by the North students, they had... They had Jim Myers and Edith Snowberger doing West Virginia history and dominated the county in the Golden Horseshoe Test. Uh, they had some outstanding English teachers over there. They, they, they were at the top in, in academic performance. The same was, uh, if you look at our list there, Hedgesville Middle is doing an outstanding job uh, with, with their uh, Okay, but, but go back to my question then. Can, can we implement, can we get Mark Barney and those who have turned schools around to put together some type of boilerplate that we can then take to the schools that are not in good shape and turn them around? Are we cloning principals off of success is what you're asking. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I don't know what the board office is doing in their uh, leadership 
development capacity. What about what the Board of Education can do? What power do you have in this realm? We can develop it through policy. We don't manage the personnel. The personnel is managed by the superintendent. Can you create policy that mandates that the, 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 the central office follows we, this blueprint plan to make this happen? I'm, well, sh I'm sure it's happening right now as they listen. <laughs> well, let, let me say this. North Middle School's issues aren't new. They've been going on for how many years, Pat? Well, it's because of the the uh, neighborhoods that have been That's incorporated. That's what I'm trying to get to. Right. We, ne we yeah. need to redistrict. We need to redistrict. And we'll have a lot of people howling and complaining when we move a, a, a neighborhood in that has problems. Well, this is why I asked Jackie, because what you were indicating was it's the population that makes up the school. So it, was a, it wouldn't necessarily work if Mark Barney's philosophies were then taken to North Middle? because of the, the neighborhoods that make up North Middle? It, it could, but I think they all have similar philosophies. I actually do. Well, we're not getting similar results, though. Well, that, that's exactly right. And, all right, we, we, we have to stop here, Bill. You get the first question out of the break, so to, uh, hang tight. We'll be back with more with the uh, president of the Board of Education in Berkeley County, Pat Murphy, Vice President Jackie Long, after these.